Coming up on the 49ers report was keeping Jalen Hurd on the 53-man roster a mistake. Should San Francisco bring back wide receiver Dante Pettis, Brandon Ayuk as the potential punt returner for this team come opening day? All of that coming up, but first, thanks to all of you for getting the 49ers report by Chat Sports past 38,000 subscribers. 40K coming up next. If you want the best 49ers news and rumors right here on YouTube, hit that red subscribe button down below. You're watching the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I am your host, Chase Sr. I hope Niner Gang is having a fantastic week. Coming up on today's show, we're going to hit the latest 49ers news and rumors. Obviously, it's been a very busy week for the 49ers and all other teams across the National Football League, trimming those rosters down to 53, also putting together the practice squad. But I want to start today's show by getting into Jalen Hurd. And I want to pose this question for the audience. Was putting Jalen Hurd on the initial 53-man roster a mistake? Let's explore it a little bit. So Hurd played last Sunday in that preseason finale against the Las Vegas Raiders for the first time since the 2019 preseason, going back to his rookie year after getting drafted in the third round out of Baylor. He's been limited in practice and in training camp all throughout the last several weeks. Limited in practice once again on Wednesday and Thursday. And Kyle Shanahan has said he wants him to be on the active roster so that he can play against the Detroit Lions in week one. But because he barely practiced at all on Wednesday and Thursday after getting game action on Sunday, is his status against the Lions up in question. You take a look at what he did against the Las Vegas Raiders, and considering that he hadn't played since 2019, has never played a regular season snap, has only played one preseason game, I thought he looked pretty good. As a pass catcher, he looked solid. There was a gadget play where he got a handoff, only picked up two yards, and looked really slow. But for a guy coming off consecutive, torn ACL, as well as a back injury, you expected him to be somewhat rusty. Trey Lance had thrown a missile his way. It was a little bit behind him. That went down as a drop for me, but all in all, six targets, four receptions for 25 yards. It was good that he was finally get, able to get on to the game field, considering he hadn't done anything throughout all of training camp, and all of the other wide receivers on this roster had really proven themselves, and because of that, their stock was certainly rising, but still heard able to make it onto the 53-man roster. Here's the steady problem, though, and here's why we continue to talk about Jalen Hurd. Can he be counted upon to be available to play in actual games? Because history shows so far throughout two seasons and change, the answer to that question has been no. And Hurd, if he's on the 53-man roster come opening day and he doesn't play, he's really taking up a critical roster spot on this team. There are positions and areas of need elsewhere on this 49ers roster. And if Hurd is taking up a roster spot ahead of a guy who has maybe earn the right to be on the team, but he's not. He's on the practice squad instead of Hurd. I think that's somewhat of a problem. And we keep talking about Hurd also because of this. The skill set, the physical qualities that he has, it's tantalizing. You cannot teach 6'5", 230 pounds at the wide receiver position. Back in college at Tennessee, a little bit at Baylor, he played a little bit of running back. So he looks physically like a tight end, but plays wide receiver. You can put him inside. You can put him outside. And when you take a look at this wide receiver depth chart, he certainly factors into the equation here as a big-bodied, tall wide receiver who can be that jump ball threat in the red zone because Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, Mohamed Sanu, Trent Sherfield are not those guys. You know what they are, though? And you know what Hurd is as well? Big-bodied wide receivers. All of the wide receivers on the 49ers roster – they're 200 pounds or more. And to put that at Kyle Shanahan's disposal, pretty fascinating and pretty intriguing from a play design standpoint because we know that Debo, Ayuk, they can pick up some serious yards after the catch and hopefully Hurd can be part of that as well. Kyle Shanahan this week did talk about having bulky wide receivers. Here's what he had to say about that philosophy. Yeah, 
He said, you try to put the best six together that you can, and by no means do I ever say, hey, we need six guys who are all over this weight or six guys who are this or that. You just try to get the best six possible. It's probably one of the bigger groups that I've ever had, just as far as everyone being that size, and there are some advantages to that. So I say all of this about Jalen Hurd, which leads me to this question, and I want you to chime into the comment section and let your feelings be known because Hurd is a polarizing player in Santa Clara. Do you think he's going to play week one? Type P for he'll play. Type I for he'll be inactive. Get your votes in in the comment section down below. Maybe Jalen Hurd is so brittle because he's not getting enough protein. And when you eat Magic Spoon cereal per serving, you get 13 to 14 grams of protein per serving. And the best news out of all of that, you can get $5 off your checkout if you go to magicspoon.com slash 49ers support. Honestly, Magic Spoon cereal has changed my life. All of the flavors are absolutely phenomenal. You're looking at cocoa up on your screen. My personal favorite in my Magic Spoon power rankings is peanut butter. In addition to all of that protein, that you get. Every bowl is under 200 calories, zero grams of sugar, only four grams of net carbs. So say goodbye to all of those crappy traditional brands that use awful ingredients or loaded with sugar, loaded with carbs. Magic Spoon, they take the opposite. The, the, they've taken the opposite approach. So go to magicspoon.com slash 49 support and get $5 off. From one wide receiver in Jalen Hurd, who's taken up a lot of the conversation throughout training camp, to another in Dante Pettis, who Niner fans don't like this guy much because he never lived up to expectations after being a second round pick back in 2018. Safe to say that he goes down as a bona fide bust. But he was waived by the New York Giants as part of their 53 man roster cut down. And he was drafted by the Niners in the second round. He's now a free agent, only lasted two and a half seasons in the Bay, and was very, very underwhelming. But the pedigree has certainly been there. The potential sometimes you see it pop when he is on the game field. He was a former All-American at the University of Washington. But from 2018 to 2020, just didn't live up to the expectations of being a second-round pick. And I think the Niners should not entertain bringing him back at all because I don't think he fits well within this receiving core. In San Francisco, 69 targets. The production was very lackluster. I think the Niners, with Kyle Shanahan calling all the shots, are set at the wide receiver spot. With Samuel, Ayuk, Sanu, Trent Sherfield has been, outside of Trey Lance, the biggest story in training camp, in my opinion. Hopefully Jalen Hurd can stay healthy. Jawan Jennings makes this roster ahead of the likes of Travis Benjamin, who comes back on the practice squad. 49ers fans have hit up social media, and they've hit me up saying, Chase, should the Niners bring back Pettis? Don't do it. Stay far, far away from Pettis. He's a scrub. He's a stiff. He can't play. He didn't do anything with San Francisco. Didn't do anything with the New York Giants. I thought the Giants could have used him at the wide receiving spot, but really didn't produce at all in training camp. That has been the story since he got drafted in 2018. So for those of you asking me if the Niners should bring back Dante Pettis, the answer to that is no. I let my feelings be known. It's time for you to let your feelings be known in the comments section. Do you want the Niners to sign Dante Pettis? He's out there on the open market. Type Y for yes, type N for no. My guess, a lot of you are going to side with me and type your N for no. Opening day in the NFL season. It's getting closer and closer. Niners traveling to Detroit to take on the Lions in week one. Going into that game as touchdown favorites. That's actually one of the biggest lines across the National Football League in week one. Over under set at 45 and a half. You might look at that number and say, that's really, really low. It's because the Lions stink. I mean, Jared Goff is due for a long season. Offensive line is bad. They might have the worst receiving core in the league. So maybe you want to smash the Niners at minus seven? Touchdown favorites? If you want to do so, let's get you hooked up with our sportsbook partner, BetUS. If you go to chatsports.com slash 49bet and enter the promo code Niners125, here's what happens. Say you put $100 in your account. Because of this 125% deposit bonus, that means you get $125 back. In total, $225 to wager with. So, hey, it's a deal you can't deny. And you can get it applied to your account only if you use that link at the bottom of your screen and use that promo code NINERS125. Lastly, before I dip on out of here, Brandon Ayuk at punt returner. Is it realistic? 
Is it going to happen? What does Kyle Shanahan think about it? What do I think about it? I think it's somewhat risky. I've talked about Brandon Ayuk being a prime breakout candidate in year two. Where the Niners got him in the first round of the NFL draft back in 2020, absolute steal. And in 12 games last year, his production was very, very impressive as a wide receiver and not a punt returner. But he did return punts with a lot of success in the college ranks at Arizona State, and he has voiced his want to to return punts for the Niners. But in 12 games last year, he was targeted almost 100 times, 60 receptions, 748 yards, average yards per catch at 12 and a half, and five touchdowns. I honestly think with an extra game this season, Brandon Ayuk could be the best wide receiver on this roster, put together a 1,000-yard season, and maybe reel in 8 to 10 touchdowns. That's why I'd be a little bit worried putting him back there as the punt returner. I have no doubts that he would make plays happen and flip the field on multiple occasions to put this 49ers offense in a position to score a touchdown and put points on the board. But putting a prime wide receiver out at punt returner just opens himself up for injury risk, and that's why I don't like it. You know who kind of likes it? Kyle Shanahan doesn't really care at all. He said, I have no problem putting a star starting wide receiver at the punt returner spot. But you really do have to weigh the pros and cons with putting one of your most dynamic weapons at the punt returner spot. There's a reason why the Niners wanted to bring back Nisimba Webster. There's a reason why those last remaining roster spots go to gadget guys and special teams guys. Because you put them in a solo role where really all they have to do is return punts and kicks. They don't have the vast skill set that a Brandon Ayuk has where they can get consistent snaps at the wide receiver spot. So you make them play punt returner, a kick returner, and they can be a very productive player, but they're always prone to injury back there because of all the gunners just streaking their way downfield trying to lay the wood. And I don't want that to happen to Brandon Ayuk because this Niners receiving core isn't the deepest receiving core in the National Football League. So what do you think? Do you want Brandon Ayuk as the punt returner? Type R for returner. Type W for I only want him as a wide receiver. Let your feelings be known in the comments section. And as always, thanks for making the 49ers report a part of your day.